Several years ago, VFIS developed a program entitled Building Blocks, Building Community Support for Emergency Service Organizations. This program uses building blocks as the foundation for an approach to communicating with the general public to recruit and retain members. The program is only an introduction. The real work comes from you, where questions are posed to you to develop specific activities, contracts, etc. It is up to you to develop the contact, make the contact, ask for participation, and network to assure the persons you recruit find value and want to stay. Good luck developing your building blocks to recruitment and retention success. Before proceeding, go to the download section of the FASP Recruitment and Retention website and print out the building blocks charts to complete during completion of this program. This program is intended to help you develop a community support plan. This plan will then enable you to work with the community to achieve specific objectives, make specific contacts, and recruit or retain the right type of person to meet your needs. You can then begin your process with an influence action plan that can be your initial planning and implementation tool. There are eight key steps or key actions that VFIS identified in their Building Blocks program. These include planning the efforts, the fire department information packet, getting good media coverage, making presentations, obtaining resources, conducting special events, becoming politically active, and building blocks of your own. This session will add the four tasks of determining the type of persons you need, selecting the venues to solicit members, make it easy for people to become members, and solicit input from members on recruiting and retaining members. One way or another, everyone plans. Some plans are informal and fairly sketchy. Others are formal and detailed. The more people you have doing the same thing, especially if that thing is important, the more you need a good written plan. Gather together your core community relations teams to put together the basic plan. Also, involve those individuals, such as department officers, who you think should be involved in the planning process. Here is the question with no clear answer. Should you involve people who are critical of your department? If someone is critical but constructive, the answer is yes. Listen with an open mind and heart, but do not include those who are overly critical, non-supportive, and detrimental to the organization's goals. They have no incentive to help you do better. Life is too short, and nothing you do or say will change their mind. Firefighters and EMS personnel know the importance of having the right tools for the job, and they know the importance of completing every job they tackle. When it comes to tackling the job of community relations, an information packet about the emergency service organization is nothing less than the right tool for the job. It is essential in completing the community relations job. An information packet is something you hand to people after you told them your story. It is something they can refer to. It's something they can share with others. And it is something that may encourage them to call you with more questions or an offer to help. It is a reminder and a reference source. Make one available to prospective new members. Media coverage is a two-edged sword. It can build public support or destroy the reputation of your department. Fire officials can complain that the press only wants to know who got hurt in the fire, or give the department coverage only when they screw up, or have a problem with the unhappy department member who complains off the record to reports on how an incident was covered, only to find out that his off the record comments were quoted in the papers the next day. Sound familiar? As a fire official, you do not have much choice but to deal with the media. Face it, what you do is newsworthy. That is, the public wants to know what the emergency service organization is up to, and reporters intend to find out. In other words, you are going to get press coverage anyway, so you may as well do what you can to help ensure that the things that you want covered are covered in a positive way that you want them covered. 
This section of your manual provides guidance on dealing with representatives of the media, reporters, editors, and columnists employed by newspapers, magazines, radio, and television stations. Ever wonder why some public speakers have you on the edge of your seat while others make you dream of a soft easy chair? Basically it comes down to three reasons. First, the effective speaker has given some thought to your interests, not just his or her own interests. Second, the effective speaker is knowledgeable, not just shooting from the hip or shall we say shooting from the lip. Third, the effective speaker is well organized and logical. While there were some naturally talented talkers, most effective speakers took the time to learn and then practice a few basic skills. This section will give you the basics of developing and giving effective presentations. Most volunteer emergency service organizations spend a lot of time and effort trying to raise funds for everything from a new fire station and air packs to a fire safety house and a mascot costume. Most emergency service organizations are old hands at running pancake breakfasts, raffles, and other community fundraisers. For departments that do not receive a share of the tax revenue, their very survival can depend on how much they can raise on their own. This activity deals with a different kind of fundraising from what you may be used to. It involves learning how to ask business leaders in your community to contribute resources to your department. Art Gladfelter, the founder of the Gladfelter Insurance Group and VFIS, strongly believed that the only way volunteer emergency service organizations can remain stable into the 21st century is by tapping into the private business resources in and around their communities. If seeing is believing, then special events may be your most effective way of communicating with the public. Where press releases and speeches tell your story, special events demonstrate it. There are two kinds of special events. With some, the public comes to you. For example, an open house where the community comes to the department, views displays and demonstrations, and meets your members. A housing dedication, a fundraising dinner, or a bingo game. With others, you go to the public. For example, a parade. Santa being driven around on a fire wrench into all neighborhoods in the community. Department members in uniform or turnout gear going to key intersections in the neighborhood on Halloween to help children cross the street and give out treats. There is nothing to prevent you from combining the two types of events. For example, you might participate in a parade that ends up as an open house at your department. Regardless of what kind of special event you plan to conduct, the preparations are pretty much the same. But before we get into specifics, you need to take some time. Some in the fire service resist getting involved in political activity because they do not want to appear partisan. But there is a big difference between being political and being partisan. You are political if you choose to get involved in and make your position known about issues and decisions by elected and appointed officials that affect emergency service organization operations. Being partisan involves supporting or promoting a particular political party, such as Republicans or Democrats. Most fire officials choose not to play party politics, but it is possible and advisable to be political without being partisan. For example, why not support a candidate based on their willingness to support the department's important issues? If a member of your town council supports your department's agenda, you owe it to that member to support his or her re-election, says a fire chief in a suburb of Cincinnati. You may want to stay informed about what the parties are doing, however. One state firefighter association asked those of their members who were partisan to attend political party meetings as citizens not as association members. Taking advantage of the partisanship of department members is a way to keep tabs on what the parties are doing without committing the department itself to the support of one party or another. You must know how or have learned how to plan a community relations program, write press releases, be interviewed by a reporter, recruit volunteers, make presentations, hold special events, obtain resources, and get politically involved. 
Use your new skills and your department will be rewarded with favorable press coverage, new recruits, and more resources. But most enduring of all, your department will have created a new partnership with the people and organizations of your community, and that is, your customers. These relationships are the foundation of your community relations program. An example is the state of Washington. They participate on committees to solve community problems like teenage pregnancy and traffic hazards. They work with a high school drama club to devise new ways of communicating fire safety messages. They even exercise with physical education classes at local schools. In other words, the measure of this individual fire department's success in community relations is much more than their ability to respond to emergencies, though they do that exceptionally well. It is also the extent to which they are involved in activities not traditionally performed by the fire department. The department looks for opportunities to position itself as part of the public service, public safety community. Look around. Chances are you are surrounded by community groups interested in being helped and giving help. Here are a few examples. Business and professional groups. In your community there may be a wide variety of organizations of business people and professionals, many of them actively looking for service projects. They may include the Kiwanis, Rotary, JCs, Optimus, and even the local bar association, medical society, and Better Business Bureau. Veterans groups. Many communities are home to American Legion posts, veterans of foreign wars, and related groups, always looking to help. Church groups, men and women's circles and groups, Sunday school classes, clergy members are an excellent source of talent and ideas. Social and service groups, such as the Elks, Moose, Masons, Junior League, Women's Club, Meals on Wheels, Visiting Nurses Associations, and the League of Women Voters are all worth contacting. Scouting organizations. Scouts of all ages look for service projects and can be an exceptionally valuable resource. They may even join as junior members and stay as senior members. Neighborhood associations. Particularly in fast-growing communities, neighborhood organizations are taking hold. Also, don't forget such groups as Welcome Wagon and Newcomers. And large employers. Some large employers recognize their civic duty and will lend executives, sometimes full-time, to worthy causes. For more on this subject, see the process entitled Obtaining Resources. We have barely scratched the surface, but even with the longest list of names does not appear a key question. What are you going to do with your new partners? Look at every prospective relationship as a two-way street. Sure, we know that you already provide fire protection, and that is about as important a service as is provided in your community. And many of you teach fire safety in the schools. Another key activity that you are well suited to provide. Their venue of operation is your venue of operation, of access to them. Don't make it difficult for prospective members to obtain information. Have a website with membership information, including the requirements and an application. Advertise the web address on all of your apparatus. Have applications ready, available at the fire stations, in a night box. One of the most effective ways to learn about resources, groups, and support systems is to ask your members, and everyone get one campaign can be your next successful way to bring in help. This session content has been excerpted from the VFIS booklet Building Blocks Building Community Support for Emergency Service Organizations available as a download from the VFIS website. This session is intended to give you a brief overview of developing and communicating with your general public. The work effort is all local and so are the results.